Golf Foxtrot Sierra Alpha Charlie, Barton Information, good afternoon. No known airfield traffic, Manchester QNH 1007. QNH 1007, Roger, Golf Foxtrot Sierra Alpha Charlie. It's new, it's unique, and now available direct from FS Academy and other retailers. It's Navigator from FS Academy. And what is Navigator? It's 12 individual modules or tutorials, progressively building up your skills level, using an interesting and entertaining mission style format that takes in all the things you need to know in order to fly and plan a VFR route. Designed by an airline captain and based on a real world course. This is the Simhanger channel. My name's Mark. Thanks for watching and let's get started. Hold on a minute, I can hear you say, haven't FS Academy already brought out a VFR package? Yes, they have. In the VFR package, we learnt about the visual flight rules, approach, how to fly circuits and such like. So what's different about Navigator? In Navigator, well, we take it one step further. Rather than the focus be on what is VFR, Navigator concentrates on the real-world piloting skills needed to fly a VFR route such as staying on course in a strong crosswind. What sort of things should we choose as reference points in our VFR navigation? How do we stay on course if our visual point isn't visual? And so on. Install is straightforward and involves unzipping a file and then placing a folder in your community folder. Once in SIM to find it, you go to Activities, in the main menu, and then scroll right the way along to the right hand side and click on Custom Content. And in here you'll find the individual modules included with FS Academy's Navigator. As we've come to expect from FS Academy, there's detailed and comprehensive documentation included. In addition to an outline of the various modules and the tasks to be achieved, it includes maps, nav logs and airspace classifications along with a handy explanation of what each of the instruments do in the Cessna 152. If you'd like to know more before making a purchase decision, you can download the manual free of charge directly from their website. Link in the notes below. Each module will deal with a different aspect of VFR and each progressively building on the skill from the other. We'll learn how to identify landmarks and their relevant classifications. How do we measure distance in terms of time? And deal with those difficult crosswinds. And throughout your training, you've got the tutor guiding you. You'll get to understand the basics of airspace classifications and when it affects VFR flight. Explore the options for flying VFR at night, as well as navigating your way across water. I did mention that there are 12 modules included. The 12th module can be found under the same section, but under the bush trips category. Navigator 12 Highlander. In this module, all the skills that you've learned are put to the test in a three hour flight across the Scottish Highlands, Loch Ness, and through to Glasgow and Edinburgh. Because it's a bush flight, if you're on PC, you can save your progress and return to it later. As far as I'm aware, that's not possible on the Xbox. It has to be completed in one session. The modules are set in different parts of the world, from the UK, the States, New Zealand and so on. Well, the best way to explain what this package does is to show you. I've jabbered on long enough. I've picked Navigator 6 Radar Contact. Let's jump in and see what's involved. Note that this is edited for time purposes, as this particular module is 30 minutes long. Each module length varies anything between 10 minutes up to about 30 minutes. And you can start at the beginning and work your way through or jump to any module at any time. In this module we're in the UK in the Greater Manchester area, a part of England known for its fairly high traffic density. Rather than fly around air traffic controlled airspace, we'll be learning how we can transition through and communicate with ATC accordingly. We're now going to introduce the use of controlled airspace so that we can incorporate overflying airfields and transiting control zones into our routes. We're flying westbound just to the north of Manchester in the UK. This is a particularly busy area for flying. During each module you're guided by your pilot David. He'll not only tell you what to do but tell you why it's needed along with any other associated information. 
You, however, are the pilot in command. You have to maintain a certain speed, altitude, heading, radio frequency and so on. If you don't, he'll warn you that you're too high, too far off course, but it won't stop the flight. As part of the briefing, for example, we know that turns should be done at a 20 degree bank angle to ensure that we will remain on track for the tutorial. If you do wander too far outside the parameters of the module, then you'll be told to restart and the training session will end. As this is a busy area for light traffic, with Manchester and Liverpool airports close together, it would be difficult to accommodate a large number of zone transits per day or make all light aircraft take a huge diversion around both control zones. To alleviate this, a special low-level route was introduced for light VFR aircraft only that runs north-south between the two major airports, but with an altitude limitation of 1,300 feet maximum. Known as the Corridor, the eastern boundary is marked by the Thelwall Viaduct, so before we reach there, we need to be at no higher than 1,300 feet. Please now take us down to 1,100 feet to comply with this. Good, now we're at the correct altitude for the VFR corridor. Continue towards Thelwall. Now that we are in the corridor, keep an extra strong lookout for other traffic, as this is a major route for VFR flight. As we are so close to the edge of the Manchester CTR, it is sensible to monitor the Manchester radar frequency. Monitor means listen to without having to transmit. Tune 118.58 into the COM1 standby window. We can indicate to ATC that we are monitoring their frequency by setting a frequency monitoring code or listening squawk into the transponder. Code 7366 is used for Manchester radar, so now please set 7366 into the transponder. ATC can see that even though we are outside of their airspace, we are listening to their frequency, so they can call us if they need to. Make a left turn towards Winsford Flash on heading 138. It's a lake located within the town of Winsford and should be easy to spot. levels of assistance that UK ATC can offer us whilst outside of controlled airspace. They can give us a basic service where we will be advised of any known activity in nearby airspace, but only while controller workload allows. We need to maintain our own traffic separation. A higher level, the traffic service may be available where ATC will guarantee to advise us of oncoming traffic, but won't provide separation instructions. We still need to keep our own separation. Continue straight ahead, which keeps us on a course to the south of the Manchester CTR. We're going to contact radar now and request a zone transit. Manchester Radar, Golf, Foxtrot, Sierra, Alpha, Charlie, request zone transit and basic service. Golf, Foxtrot, Sierra, Alpha, Charlie, standby. We don't respond to a standby instruction, but continue to listen for the controller to call us back. Now that we have made contact, it does not yet mean that we are permitted into the control zone, so we must remain outside whilst we wait. 
Golf Alpha Charlie, pass your message. ATC have abbreviated our call sign to Golf Alpha Charlie, so we can now do the same to ease communication. Golf Alpha Charlie, Cessna 152, Winsford Flash at 1,100 feet on QNH 1007. Request transit to Barton. Golf Alpha Charlie, Squawk 7352. 7352, Golf Alpha Charlie. ATC have assigned us a new transponder code of 7352, so set this into our transponder. Golf Alpha Charlie, proceed Jodrell to Alderney, not above 1,300 feet VFR. Report to Alderney. As we pass Jodrell Bank, we can see the hill at Alderney Edge, up ahead, at slightly to the right of the nose. Head there next. We're on our way to Alderney Hill. We've been instructed to stay at 1,100 feet. As you can see, I'm deliberately disobeying this. I'm now going to climb up and see if the instructor picks up on it and corrects me. Doing a fairly rapid climb now. Please accurately keep us at 1,100 feet. Ah, so our instructor was paying attention. Golf Alpha Charlie, proceed over the runway 23 right threshold, en route to Sail Water Park. 23 right threshold to Sail, Golf Alpha Charlie. OK, that's the green light for us to cross over the runways at Manchester Airport. Fly overhead the landing end of runway 23 right. Now carry on straight ahead to the VRP at Sail Water Park a lake dedicated to open water swimming. We have navigated with both the stepping stone and dead reckoning method and gotten to grips with the radios and ATC. Next we're heading to Sweden for a colder climate to see how your visual references change in the winter months. Well, that's just a short sample of what you can expect in FS Academy's Navigator, a set of tutorials with each module designed to equip you with the necessary skills and techniques for VFR flying. According to David, it should be on the marketplace in a couple of weeks' time, so it will be coming to the Xbox. For PC, it is available now. List of retailers is on the FS Academy website. Links in the notes below. Coming in at around £20, I think this package represents good value for money. And I enjoy these short modular training sessions. If you like this type of thing, I've also done a review on the IFR series from FS Academy, as well as their Jetliner. And this package navigator just rounds off the skill set nicely. It helps me be a better pilot and is a great refresher for me. If you'd like to know more about any of these packages, you can visit the FS Academy website or check out my review videos. Once again, link in the notes below. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found this useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourself. See you again soon. Bye for now.